Okay, notes. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Ian Boyle, and uh, I am a harmonica player. So, so, sorry, Ian, can I just uh, button? Can I just button? Can, can everyone mute their mics, please? Um, in fact, yeah. Sorry, Ian, you. Uh... That's okay. I'll, 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 I can always start again. So I can mute all actually, and then. Uh. Right. Okay, Ian, start again. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Take two. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. My name's Ian Boyle, and I am a harmonica player. Um, and assuming you guys are all harmonica players too, has everybody got harmonicas with them? Hold up your harmonicas. Let's see them. Good. We're going to be using them. Who hasn't got a harmonica in the key of D? Just throw that one in. Has everybody got a key of D? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's, search. everyone's searching through the harmonica bags now. That's great, because we're not going to use them. We're going to use the key of C. I'm joking. We are going to use the key of uh, D. And in fact, the one I've got here at the moment, this is a, a marine band. So I might just throw this in because this is in the key of C. Uh, and I only received it yesterday. It's a marine band classic. Uh, just in case anybody's interested, that actually uh, at a bargain price on Amazon at the moment is at £23. And I thought, well, that's at uh, that price. Um, can't really refuse it. So uh, I got one delivered yesterday. So at the moment, the £23, if anybody's interested, uh, I would say that's a fairly good bargain. Uh, okay, right, so this uh, workshop is pretty much aimed at maybe beginners, intermediates, uh, and maybe some advanced people might get something out of this. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to think that they, that they might do. And it's all about playing melodically, playing tunes, dressing our tunes up and making them sound um, quite nice. So in uh, every harmonica inside, or locked inside every single harmonica, it's a huge amount of absolute loveliness, beautiful tones and delicious notes that we need, as harmonica players, we need to coax these, these tunes out. Um, now, when I first started playing harmonica, um, I just wanted to play tunes. I thought that's the way to go. I didn't think about blues. I didn't think of all this sort of... I didn't think of any blues or, or, or playing, um, improvising or anything. I just wanted to play tunes. Um, and it's a good thing because people always come up to you and say, oh, play us a tune. And if you're one of these guys who just plays blues tunes all the time or blues music, half the stuff that it's not completely recognisable to everybody, uh, but lots of tunes are, and we can get a whole load of tunes out of um, an uncustomised, out-of-the-box harmonica. So... And what I'd like to do today is try to make, uh, make it so if you're a complete beginner, you've got some direction of how you can make um, some really nice tunes and understand dynamics a little bit as well. Uh, so I think what I'll, we'll start by playing, try to give you an, an example of what, what I mean. Um, okay. Okay, Ode to Joy. It's a very simple song, very simple kind of tune, and it's easy to play on the harmonica. Now, I just played very simple notes. Now, the first thing anybody needs to do when they're learning to play the harmonica is to play single notes. Now, to achieve single notes, you need to practice a lot. To be able to achieve single notes and not have leakage from neighboring notes is not as easy as, it, as many people might think. It takes a lot of practice. So one of the best ways to practice that is to play uh, the major scale and play it repetitively. 
So something on the lines like this. Okay, you don't want to have any leakage. When you first start trying to play that scale, it may sound something like this. Okay, that's because you're getting leaks from other notes, so you're not quite getting on just a single hole. So, practicing that, I mean, relentlessly practicing it, if you can, you know, is, is a great thing to do. Uh, so you practice, it's very repetitive. It's, it's one of the things that I would recommend you do, um, only because it's, it's so advantageous. Uh, so practice it and practice it. And the time to stop practicing it is just before you start going mad. So when you just like forget who you are, that is a great time to stop practicing uh, that. What I suggest you do is five minutes, 10 minutes a day, of uh, repetitively practicing that major scale and it will help immensely when it comes to playing uh, some tunes. Uh, right, so uh, what do I mean when I say dressing up uh, our tunes? Okay, how shall I put this? Okay, before I played um, Ode to Joy. Now, you can play that in many, many ways. Uh, now, before I played it in single notes, and I didn't put a lot of effort, didn't put a lot of feeling into it. So I'm going to play that again. And this time I'm going to swap it around a little bit to see what I'm talking about when it comes to dressing up notes. Okay, that's what I played before. I'll just carry on. Okay, so um, th thank you for the, <laughs> the silent applauding. Um, okay, so as you can see, there's lots of different ways of, of um, playing any tune. And what I'm going to do today, I'm going to go through a couple of tunes. Um, it's not a workshop on um, how to play the particular tunes that we're going to, we're going to play. It's about using those techniques um, and how we can achieve something to make things sound just a little more interesting than playing single notes. Because uh, I see a lot of people uh, on some of the Facebook and Instagram or whatever, and they are playing lovely tunes, but they are just literally playing single notes. Well, you can expand on that, and it's not overly difficult to do. Um, it just takes practice, um, obviously. Okay. Um, tongue block. Blocking. Right, I can see everybody on the screen now. How many people here can uh, consider themselves to be a tongue blocker? Oh, right, okay. All right, who considers themselves to be a lip purser? No, no, okay. Brilliant, okay. And um, who's in between? Who, who does a little bit of the uh, tongue blocking and throws it in when they want to? 
Okay. Right. So tongue blocking is quite, um, for me, I feel it's, it's a fairly important thing to do. Uh, I think that if you only lip purse, I think that you're probably missing out. Uh, if you tongue block all the time, then that's great. If, if you are in the middle of both, that's great as well. If you're able to tongue block when you need to, excellent. Uh, you know, but if you are just a complete lip person, don't do tongue blocking at all. Um, you know, I would recommend trying to begin uh, tongue blocking. Now, when I um, began tongue blocking, I actually spent, I think it was something like 12 hours just relentlessly trying to play tunes, uh, blocking holes. And after 12 hours, we got there. And I never turned back then, but I did spend an awful lot of time just learning to tongue block. Uh, does anybody not know what tongue blocking is? Okay, now everyone knows what tongue blocking is. Great, so we don't need to talk about that because uh, I wasn't going to anyway. Uh, right. Okay. So there's all kinds of different music that we can play um one of my favorite or if not my favorite harmonica player is uh somebody called buddy green have we all heard of buddy green okay he's got a brilliant album out called um the harmonica anthology uh and it's superb I recommend anybody download that it's 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 a great great album and one of the the songs or the tunes he plays on it is called the it's a little Irish. It's a little Irish tune. I'm not sure whether Buddy's wrote it himself or somebody else has written it. I haven't got a clue. But it's called the O'Malley Blackwells of Ross, and it's a tune that I I play quite often. Uh, and it it goes something like this. Okay, and that's pretty much the tune. And they're all single notes all the way through it. Now, when Buddy plays it, he plays all single notes, but he has um, somebody playing the penny whistle behind him and a banjo behind him, and that's all well and good. But when you're playing on your own, you need to, if you can, learn to back yourself up. Lee Sankey, in one of our previous lockdown sessions, says the harmonica is uh, pretty much um, a band in a box, is what he called it. And I can understand where he's coming from because you can actually back yourself up quite nicely with the harmonica by adding things up. So here's a little bit more of that tune where I am using an Irish reel, so to speak. Um, but again, I'm uh, backing myself up with the harmonica. So here we go. we go so sometimes i use single notes and then sometimes i'll leak other notes into it okay right so what i like to do now is we're going to go into the first exercise that i've got planned so has everybody got their harmonicas ready okay and it's just a fairly simple thing one of the most important thing is uh, for melodic playing is control you need to be able to control all of your notes. Um, so if we take a single note and if we take whole four, 
okay? If you, lots of tunes start on hole four uh, in, in first position, but we want to be able to control that note. And so when I say control it, we can just literally play it, okay? Or we can play it, uh, um, we can fade it in and fade it out. Uh, the fading in and fading out, so you can control the volume of every single note. That's what I talk about when it comes to control. So if you take that one hole, hole four. Which hole am I on here now? Okay, I will fade it in and fade it out. Uh, if I do it first, then you, you guys have a go at it. Okay, and that's a blow note. So have a, have a little go at that. It's so important to be able to control these notes and you'll, you'll have more flow to your music. Again, if you go to hold two, and let's fade that one out, but on a draw note. So hold two. Okay, and what we're doing is just taking the hard edges off the note. Right, I'm just going to share uh, a screen. I'm going to, a second. Sorry, I should have been a little bit more prepared than this. I thought I was. Um, There we go. Okay. Um, sorry, just checking the chat there. Okay. Right, I'm going to play a tune. As everybody on the chat, I want you to, um, what I'd like you to do now is, I'm going to play a tune, and as soon as you recognize the tune, I want to see who, who, who can type what tune it is that I'm playing. Uh, so fingers on the button and get this into the chat uh, messages thing. Now, um, I'm sure you'll all recognize the tune, but I want to see who can spell it correctly. Are you ready? There we go, Trevor. Trevor's got it. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, Brian, that's right. You've got the S on the end. You've got the <laughs> what they said. <laughs> Jerry, that's cheating. Um, yeah, Fera Jacker. Fera Jacker with the S on the end. I'm, I'm going to say they're probably both right. That's right. Uh, a little French number. Now, you're probably thinking, goodness me, that's an easy tune to play. Okay, you're right, it is an easy tune to play. If we can do this, does this work? Nice. Predictive text killed your spelling. Oh, it's always the way. <laughs> right, okay. All right, I was actually going to try and share a document with you so you could all take away a document, but I don't think you can do that. You just pop it into the text, but you can't. Poor man, that one, never mind. You should be able to do that using, have you done share screen at the bottom? Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then you should get... Yeah, I was going to actually send, actually send a file through to everybody so they can take it away and keep it. Well, if you send it through to the website, you can. Okay. Um, if you, yeah, if you can't work out how to do it now. Nobody's right. Okay, let's uh, let's share that then. Okay. Right. Can everyone see that? Okay. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure that most of you will be able to play this tune without me having to put the tabs, but there they are anyway. And uh, as Sam says, we'll, we'll put it on the website if, 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 you, if you want it. Uh, 
why am I choosing this tune? Well, because it's a very simple tune. And some of the very simple tunes are the best to use as musical scratch pads. And so this particular tune is an excellent tune to be to use when it comes to dressing up uh, or, or practicing dressing up uh, your, your tunes. And as I say, it can just be used as a scratch pad. Okay. When I played it before, I played it with uh, no feeling, nothing. I just played the notes. And there's far more to music than just playing notes. You know, it, it makes a massive difference if uh, you can use a little bit of feeling, a little bit of creativity. And the thing I would always say is that whatever tune that you play, even though it's just a simple child's nursery rhyme, um, it, the tune still needs to be respected by the musician. So always respect every tune that you play and try to play it uh, the best way you can. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Fur as Jacques, okay. Okay, so that's four, four draw, five, four, okay. We could play it nice and simply like that, or we could play it like this. Okay, and that's just using a little bit of the wah-wah sound. Okay, so it just makes it a little more interesting. Again, fading the, fading the notes in rather than just having a harsh lip on each of the notes. Okay. Now what I did there, I also leaped uh, a bit of a note in there as well. Uh, so when I played the Fera, and then I went on to the uh, Jaka, um, I, I sort of leaped the notes in. So, so I sort of played a chord on the five and the four. Okay. Again, it just makes it sound more interesting, a little more professional. So you can do that with all of the notes. And it doesn't matter if you're a lip person or whether you're a tongue blocker, this is something which is uh, fairly easy to do. Because it's an easy tune, there's no bends involved in it. It's, it's just um, a way if you can use as a scratch pad to practice lots of different techniques. So let me play it again. Okay, now that time I was using tongue blocking and I was using octaves to play the tune right the way through. Um, does anyone know how to play the octaves? Okay, brilliant. So, um, if you're not sure how to play octaves, you really do need to be able to tongue block uh, to play octaves. Now, I'm not, we haven't got huge amounts of time, uh, so I'm not going to run. Uh, through a, a course of, of how to play octaves, but I promise you there's lots and lots of uh, videos on YouTube uh, which you can go to and learn how to do octaves if you're uh, a tongue blocker. It makes, it makes a big difference. So basically what we're doing is we're going to put our tongue so um, on hold four, on, sorry, on hold three, I'll play the notes either side of it. Okay, as I say, you need to really go onto YouTube. We haven't got time to be going through that uh, particular thing just, just at this moment in time. Okay, but as I say, it's a great scratch pad to, to use because it's such a simple tune and you can play it without having to think about it and you're just thinking about the techniques rather than the actual tune itself. Uh, so here's a few examples. OK, 
Okay. What I did there as well was some rhythmic playing. So you can actually play the tune rhythmically. Okay. So what we'll do, if I just take a minute, if you just like to practice and then uh, practice some of the... Um, using that just as a scratch pad, that tune, have a little practice, and then after it, we'll see if anybody would like to volunteer and come and play for the group. We can unmute you and you can just give us a couple, um, a few of you can have a go and see what we come up with. How's that? So just have a little practice. And then if you'd like to have a go, just put it in the chat and uh, we'll see what some of you come up with. Okay, right, so uh, Barry and Irene uh, has asked, could you explain briefly the tech of the rhythm playing? Yes, absolutely. Okay, um, basically it's to do with your breathing. So short breaths in and out. Very short breaths. Okay, and you can play this tune uh, chordally like I just did there, or you can play it with single notes, but the, the, the very short breaths in and out. And that is all about practice. Um, that is briefly what I'm talking about when, when we're playing rhythmically. There are probably there are other ways of playing rhythm, rhythmically. Um, uh, so, as to speak, tongue blocking. Okay, and that's using your tongue and fluttering your tongue on and off all the time. So that's um, a way that, that, that you, can, you can play rhythmically with your tongue. Again, all of these things are practice. So hopefully you can see what I mean by using this very simple song uh, as a scratch pad uh, to learning some of these techniques. Because it's such a simple song, you can use it all the time. And I'm, that's what I do a lot of. I always go back to or play a lot of the, the songs that I started when I first started playing the harmonica. Um, and I go back to these tunes and I change the way I play them. And again, they're just scratch pads for playing more complicated songs. And uh, we are going to move on to a more complicated song very shortly. But first of all, is anybody like to volunteer to play uh, their version of Berta Jacker for us? Anybody? Come on, there must be somebody who'd like to volunteer to play. Russ, here we are, Russ. Can we unmute Russ, please, uh, Sam? I'm unmuted. 
Yeah, we can hear you there, Russ. Okay. Let's have a listen. What have we got? <laughs> There we go. Up at the end. Brilliant. Let's be round of applause for Russ. Well done, Russ. Everyone is clapping, Russ. Uh, okay. I thought that was I thought that was really good. Uh, so you were using tone blocking, and again you were using uh, the rhythmic um, a lot like what I was using before. Now going back to the tone blocking thing, it's an amazing thing what you can do uh, with using your tongue on a harmonica. You have all those effects, uh, and Russ has just demonstrated uh, why it's, it's kind of important to be able to learn to tongue block. Uh, but as I said at the beginning of, uh, right at the beginning of the session, is that it's it's really important to be able to get those single notes first and have some control before you start moving on to things a little more complicated. Uh, you want those nice, clear, crisp notes. Once you get them, then all the things, you know, move on to those other things and they are easier. The crisp notes, very, very important. Okay, anybody else like to... Um, Attempt it. Anybody? Come on, don't be shy. Jerry! Jerry, we've got Jerry. Let's unmute Jerry, please, Sam. Jerry, you guy. Sorry, you're still muted there, Jerry. One second. Sam's working on it. Okay, okay. we can hear you, Jerry. I'm done now. <laughs> oh. Here we go. Beautiful. Um, very bouncy, Jerry. Very bouncy. I like that. <laughs> a lot of coffee. Okay. I'll tell you what I'd like you to do, Jerry, whilst I've got you here. Um, let's do it again. Okay. Uh, but this time, I want you to play it slower. Okay. And I want you to, I want you to put, I want you to put everything into it. So I want you to play, play something more soulful. I want you to change the way that you played that tune. Something okay. on the lines of, So what I want you to do, I want you to play as if it's it's it, it's much slower, much gotcha. more soulful, uh, more beautiful. If you see what I'm saying, have a go. Gotta go for beauty. Yeah, I want you to go for okay. beauty. That's what we want. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I'll give Jeremy, it a go. everybody <laughs> playing beautifully. <laughs> Okay, well done, Jerry. Again, you changed everything around a little bit. And um, it shows how you can use this tune to, um, to be trying to, to use it as, again, as a scratch pad. There's so, so many ways you can play this tune. Okay, right, thanks for those uh, who has who's just uh, demonstrated the, their skills. Now we're gonna quickly because I've just noticed the time is absolutely galloping by. So the next song I was going to uh, quickly go through, and it's, it would actually take a huge amount of time to go through this properly, but uh, has anybody heard of a group called The Beatles? What's everybody laughing at? <laughs> Everyone's falling about laughing there. Um, because I'm guessing... That you have right let's just take away that okay must be local to your neck of the woods there mate it is local to my neck of the woods yeah um okay 
Have we got the shared window back up now? Share screen. There we go. Okay, can we all see that? You heard of a song called Ticket to Ride? I'm sure you have. Okay. Um, this is a, a, a cracking song. It's far more complicated. And we're going to go through it quickly. because I've just realized we've only got seven minutes. Seven minutes just to, to, to go through a, a song as cool as this. Um, again, we'll put this one up on the website, uh, the tabs for it. Because take this away. Has anybody ever played this tune before? Anybody know how to play this? Yeah, okay. Joe, you played it. Okay. This is a song you can dress up. And again, you can use this as a bit of a scratch pad. There's, it's a fairly simple song to play. Don't try and play it along with the Beatles, uh, the original Beatles. Do play along with it on uh, a karaoke show. If you go on YouTube and you put on Ticket to Ride Karaoke, um, and, and you can play along using these notes. Uh, it is in the key of A, so you need your D harmonica uh, to play along with it because it's in second position. No, it's in second position because all the notes are pretty much draw notes with the odd passing note, which is uh, a blow note. Okay, again. Um, this is a song that I, I use sometimes. Uh, occasionally, I go out and I play out on the street. I like to go busking. I just literally take my harmonica, a microphone, and maybe something as a, to use as a bit of a beat. So I play lots and lots of tunes. Uh, and this is why I always talk about dress, dressing tunes up. Okay, I think I'm going to be sad. Um, that's the first line. Okay, nice and simple, but it's just the first line. So if you play that, everybody have a quick go at just playing that, that one line. I think I'm going to be sad. And then we'll see what we can do with it. It's a cracking tune. Okay. So what can we do with that one line? Well, straight away, okay, we could... We throw up, if, if, we, if we draw on, actually what we can do is draw on one and two, and then throw your tongue on hole one, okay? Now, even if it's not a, hole, a tongue blocker, give it a go. So, draw on one and two, I'll throw your whole, I'll throw, I'll throw your tongue on hole one, and you'll get this effect. Okay, sounds a little more interesting then. Okay, moving on to I'm going to be sad. Okay, what did I do there? So I slipped up there, uh, rather than just moving through the notes, I slid from hole one up to uh, hole four draw, uh, hole four blow. So to go now. Do you see the effect you go, you get by, by sliding? Up, up the harmonica rather than just playing the notes. It sounds different. I'm not going to say it necessarily sounds better. It just sounds different. It's something that you can use uh, in, in, in your harmonica playing. Again, just using these tunes as a scratch pad. It's, I'm not teaching the, the, the song. I'm teaching the technique um, rather than the actual song. Uh, so... Okay, so that whole line, you could, as I say, um, draw on hole one and two, throw your tongue on hole one, 
and get that um, get that effect. So I think, I think. On the next bit, I'm gonna be sad. And sliding up. We'll hold two to two, blow four. Okay, and you can see how that effect um, makes it sound a little more interesting. Let's move on to the next line. Okay, at the end of this next line, I think a warble could be used. Are we all good at warbling? Okay. So on today, play a warble. So that'll be on the four and the five. On today, give that a go. Um, I mean, this is what I've talked about when I, when I say dressing up. It just makes it sound a little more interesting to the listener. To the listener, and then we've got the word "yeah." Okay. Right. What did I do there on the yeah? So I used the wah wah, and then I dragged, I dragged myself off and slid down the harmonica right the way off. So you end up with this effect. Okay. Now, Unfortunately, I didn't realise the time has absolutely flown by here, and uh, it's it's really really uh, quick. However, so I'm going to skip through this, and we'll put the rest of the uh, we'll put the rest of the tune on the website for you. Now, one of the uh, little parts on this, if you really like a challenge, uh, we have the middle bit which goes like this. Okay, this is the middle bit I'm talking about now. Are you ready? Okay, so that little fill at the end normally played by the guitar, I've got it right here. I don't know if you can see my cursor here. And that's it right there. Okay. If you fancy a challenge, um, have a little go at that. Um, it's a great little, you don't have to, it's tough to play it like that, but that's, that's the way it should be played. And uh, you can, it makes the song, and you see very, very few people who play the harmonica play that little, uh, those notes there as that, that, that particular film. So let me just have a little go at playing uh, playing this for you before I, I hand over uh, back to Sam and for Richard to come on uh, to give you an idea how you could play Ticket to Ride and then I'm going to leave you. So here we go. This is a Ticket to Ride.
something like that anyway. Take it to ride. We'll put that on the website for you. I'm going to hand that back over to Sam, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, thank you very much, Ian. Uh, that's, I hope everyone feels uh, feels very dressed up now. It's, uh, it's a great demonstration of you know taking us just a simple um, simple song and and uh, throwing all sorts into it. So I, I, I think that's uh, really 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 good there, Ian. Thank you very much. Um, I kind of suggest we take a 10 minutes break or so before um, we get Richard starting. <laughs>